Magandang araw po muli sa inyong lahat at ngayon po ang ikasampo na installment natin sa ating maiksing pag-aaral ng Biblical Theology. Ang laman po ng ating pag-aaral sa episode na ito ay ang sumusunod. Una-una ay titignan natin, babaliktanawin natin ang ating pag-aralan sa Judges at bubuksan natin ang aklat ng Ruth. Titignan natin ang mensahe na daladala ng aklat ng Ruth. Titignan rin natin ang ilang theological themes na matatagpuan dito at gagawa tayo ng practical applications patungkol sa mga mensahe at natutunan natin sa aklat na ito. At sa panghuli ay titignan rin natin yung mga ibang kaganapan, mga discovery at mga naimbento ng panahon ni Ruth. Tayo po ngayon ay nasa ikaapat na epoch. Ito yung panahon ng 1200 BC hanggang 930 BC. At nung nakaraang aklat na tinalaki natin, ang aklat ng mga judges, makita natin na ang mga judges ay hindi lamang deliverers or saviors kung tutusin, pero sila rin ay ehemplo ng pamumuhay na may kabanalan, godly living. Also, judges started well, kaya na atin nakita, but eventually, unti-unti, Israel spiraled downward in sinfulness, pabigat na pabigat, paggrabe na paggrabe ang kanilang kasalanan at sa dulungan at ng judges, the Israel is in total mess. Na kung saan ang judges sila dapat yung savior, sila ngayon ang siyang nagdudulot, naghahatak pababa. At ang mga saserdote, mga pare in the in priestly line ni Aaron yung Levites na sila dapat yung nag-accommodate at nag-accompany to worship sila ngayon ang nagtutulak sa Israel na sumamba sa mga kagaya ng mga pagano ang ilang theological theme na tinignan natin doon is the true deliverer and also yung hall of faith na nabanggit sa Hebrews chapter 11 na kung saan nalagay doon ang ilang pangalan ng mga judges practical application ng judges includes tragic consequences of sin and also the grace of God at ngayon po ay titingnan naman natin, bubuksan natin ang aklat ng Ruth. Ilang bagay ang tingnan muna natin ay ang author at ang place of composition. Sa katunayan ng lumang tipan, ng Old Testament, it offers no clues as to the author of Ruth. And also, sabi nga sa ilang mga scholars, or the Jewish tradition credits it to Samuel. But that seems unlikely sapagkat matagal ng patay si Samuel bago pa dumating si David at maging hari. And the only thing clear is that the writer has access to David's family history. Secondly, yung date of composition itong Ruth. So the book was probably written after David became king, yung panahon na ito ay 1010 BC, or during Solomon's reign. Yung reign ni Solomon ay... 970 BC. So as the book ends with David, ito yung huling-huling part ng Ruth, yung genealogy ni David. It sounded the theme that David's rise to prominence culminated centuries of divine providence in his family. And his kingship, yung kingship ni Haring David, fulfills the promise given to the patriarchs. Kung babalikan natin sa Genesis chapter 17 verse 6 and 16 as well as sa chapter 35 verse 11. At ang kanya nga pagdating, it was anticipated by Moses sa Deuteronomy chapter 17 verses 14 to 20. Yung kung saan naglulong ang Israel, dumating yung panahon na sila magkaroon ng hari. So the book of Ruth lays bridge between the repeated longing of for leadership at the end of Judges. Sa dulo ng Judges, ang sabi nga doon na walang hari ang Israel. So, the book of Ruth extols God's sovereignty, loyal protection of His people, and His desire for them to flourish as a nation. Tingnan naman natin kung ano nga ba ang mensahe na nakapaloob dito sa aklat ng Ruth. So, the language of redemption permeates the story of Ruth. So, napakadami na paulit-ulit makikita natin. Ito, sa katunayan, yung words built around on the root na sa Hebrew, Gaal, or in the English translation, redeem, yung mga, itong root word na to, and yung composite words that spring from this root word, it appears a total of 23 times. So, firstly, tingnan natin, is leaving the promised land results in tragedy. Ito yung sa chapter 1. So, sinimulan ang root sa verse 1, in the days when the judges ruled, this ties the book to the, of Ruth to judges, and the next phrase was, there was a famine. Kung babalikan natin, Deuteronomy chapter 28, it had spelled out quite clearly 
the negative consequences that would come to Israel if they turned away from God and worshipped idols. Ito yung choose for yourself today, yung blessings and curses. And also, famine was one of the judges or judgments mentioned in there. So as the story begins, a family moves from Bethlehem to the land of Moab. They had two sons who took Moabite wives. Soon the father died and the two sons also died. Point, point lamang, God had given the Israelites the land. Sila pinigyan ng pangakong lupa at sila dinala doon ng Diyos. And they were not supposed to move away from it. Sapagkat ang blessings ay nakatali dito sa lupa na ito. Also, Naomi went back to Bethlehem and her situation changes and the famine is over. Sa dulo ng chapter 1 ay tapos na yung famine na ito. So, makita natin na malaking mess nga ang Israel ng panahon na ito. Sapagkat ang mga Israelita mismo ay umaalis sa kanilang lupa. Na sinabi ay huwag silang alis doon sapagkat ang biyaya o yung blessings ay nakatali doon. Pero sila ay umalis at hindi lamang yun, they took for themselves Moabite women. And secondly, ang buong chapter 2, Ruth meets Boaz at the grain field. So even after Naomi and Ruth arrive in Bethlehem, ang kanilang pamumuhay at especially yung kanilang fate, yung destiny nila, is uncertain. For there is no one to care for them and no easy way for them to earn a living. Si Naomi at si Ruth, sila lamang yung magkasama dito. So Ruth volunteers to go out to the fields to pick up off the ground any grain the main har harvesters dropped or missed. As it turned out, Ruth ends up in the fields of Boaz, whom was the clan of Elimelech. Si Elimelech siya yung namatay na fa father-in-law ni Ruth, so asawa ni Naomi. So their first dialogue is strange. Boaz encourages her to stay in the fields so she would be safe. Ito is our chapter 2 verses 8 and 9. And Ruth appears to be politely na, kung sasabihin na natin, flirting dito kay Boaz. And their quote-unquote first date, ito yung chapter 2 verse 14. And Boaz tells his men to leave lots of extra sheaves of grain on the ground for Ruth. So, nagbibigay na ng, ng pabor or favor in the eyes of Boaz itong si Ruth. Ruth returns to Naomi loaded with more grain than Naomi could have expected. Ruth tells what happened in the fields. So, Naomi and Ruth, nakita nila ito si Boaz bilang kanilang redeemer, yung magliligtas sa kanila. Ito yung sa chapter 2 verse 20. At ang third part ng aklat ng Ruth ay ang chapter 3 hanggang pagtawid na chapter 4 verse 12. Kung saan Ruth meets Boaz at the threshing floor and their marriage. So, even though things are going well for Ruth, and Boaz continues to look out for her during the harvest, the relationship seems to have stalled. Parang nagkaroon ng stagnant na, or nagkaroon ng blanco na panahon ng kanilang relasyon. Boaz is apparently slow to move the relationship. Sabi na natin may pagka mabagal, torpe. So Naomi decides to help. Follow, following Naomi's instructions, Ruth went to Boaz. Boaz awakened and complimented Ruth. Ito yung sa chapter 3 verse 11. And marrying Ruth may have its technicalities sa verses 12 and 13 ng chapter 3. Boaz settled the issue the following morning. So isa siya ehemplo. Sinasettle niya agad. Bukas na bukas ay aayusin niya ito. Nang sa ganun ay mapakasalan niya itong si Ruth. So the town elders not only rule in Boaz's favor, but they also call on the Lord to bless Ruth establishing their full acceptance of her into the community sa so verses 4 chapters ele chapter 4 verses 11 and 12 so makita natin hindi lamang Ruth found favor in the eyes of Boaz but yung kanilang pagsasama found favor hindi lamang sa elders but also to the whole community so it is truly a blessing kung sasabihin nga natin sila nga ay tinadhana at pinagtagpo so finally, the fourth and grandest part of the book of Ruth. Ito yung sa chapter 4 verses 13 to 22 from Naomi to Ruth to David a genealogy. So the story ends happily. Boaz marries Ruth and she gave birth to a, sign, to a son. Ito nga ay isang sign of blessing. So Naomi who had nothing at the beginning of the story now has a family to take care for her and a grandson for her to love. 
Ito yung makita natin sa verses 13 to 16 ng chapter 4. She has shifted from one who was outside of the land and lives without basic necessities of life to one who lives in the land and is blessed by the Lord. Kung maalala natin, nagsimula ang aklat ng Ruth sa pagpapakilala sa kanila, kila Naomi, na wala sila dito sa lupang pangako sapagkat meron ngang famine. At ngayon, pagbalik nila, they were, they were hindi lamang taken care of yung kanilang basic necessities, but a greater blessing by the Lord. So, point given is that God has worked behind the scenes through two humble women and one faithful man to start the process of raising up a mighty Redeemer, David. Naomi and Ruth, they saw Boaz as their Redeemer. Pero all of that ay nasa kamay ng Diyos sapagkat gagamitin sila to raise up a mighty Redeemer, which is the longing king of Israel, David. So the blessing is even bigger than Ruth or Naomi could have imagined. Ruth's child would be the father of Jesse and the grandfather of David. And David will be the solution to the terrible situation in Israel that is described in Judges and alluded to Ruth. Kung babalikan natin, nagsimula ang Ruth. Sinabi nga doon, panahon na namumuno yung mga Judges. Pero, sa end ng Judges, people are doing what is right in their eyes. Sapagkat walang savior, walang deliverer, walang judge na manguna sa kanila mamuhay na may kabanalan, godly living at magdadala sila sa kanila patungo sa presensya ng Panginoon. So, the elders bless Ruth by referring to Rachel and Leah. Si Rachel and Leah, sila yung asawa ni Patriarch Jacob. But the elders also move to the next generation of patriarchs by referring to Perez. Ito yung nabanggit sa verse 12 na chapter 4 at si Perez ay makikita sa Genesis chapter 38. Perez, the son of Judah, had a foreigner mother but is Israel's for father. Also, the book of Ruth closes with this genealogy which tracks the lineage of David from Perez with a foreign mother Tamar through Boaz with a foreign wife Ruth to Obed si, ito yung anak ni Ruth to Jesse at ngayon tingnan naman natin yung ilang theological themes dito sa aklat ng Ruth bagamat maiksi lamang ang aklat ng Ruth pero napaka grand ng pinaparating nito sa atin one thing to note ay absent mula dito sa aklat na ito yung dramatic miracles and wonders na hindi kagaya ng mga natalakay na natin mga aklat God actually never speaks at all dito sa aklat ng Ruth so given that May tatlong bagay tayong titingnan sa lecture na ito. Una-una ay God's sovereignty. Secondly, the practice of Wesed. Ito yung Hebrew word for acts of loyalty, compassion, and mercy. And thirdly, God's divine providence for the kinsman redeemer. So firstly, God's sovereignty. Isa nga sa tema ng aklat ng Ruth is God's gracious provision for a son. For the ay, walang heir na family ni Elimelech at ni Naomi. Kung wala silang heir, sila ay ma-extinct kung tutusin. So, makita natin that God intervenes in this natural course by renewing food production kasi may famine, enabling Ruth to survive, and eventually sa pamamagitan rin ng pagiging soberano ng Diyos, Ruth will conceive. As in that sense, ay matutugunan yung nakikinaharap nila Naomi na extinction na kanilang family line. So, by renewing food production, Naomi is guided back to Judah. Naibalik siya dito sapagkat wala na famine. Kaya sila ay nakabalik na. And also, by enabling Ruth to conceive, it provided Naomi family an heir. So, in between these interventions, meron nga tiyatawag na quote-unquote accidents. These accidents happen, but still, sabi nga ng mga kaibigan ni Naomi, all the credit goes to God because God is sovereign in all the course of human life at siya na po provide sa kanyang mga anak in achievement or in achieving of His grand redemptive plan. Secondly, the practice of hesed. Ito yung muli yung Hebrew word for acts of loyalty, compassion, and mercy. So, Ruth models this ideal at its best and rightly earns rewards. This has said links Naomi's childlessness and Ruth's familial devotion with later reversals of their fortunes. Kung babalikan natin, uh, sabi nga ni Naomi, ay pwede na bumalik si Ruth kung saan niya gustong bumalik. Bumalik na siya sa kanila. Pero ayaw ni Ruth, siya ay loyal at devoted dito 
kay Naomi. So these reversals comprise answers to their earlier petitions. And in the case of Ruth, her rewards were actually exceeded expectations. Actually, hindi niya kaya i-handle ito. Kung makikita lamang niya yung plano ng Diyos sa pagbibigay ng biyaya na ito na sa pamamagitan ni Boaz, kanilang Redeemer, but more so kay Haring David na magiging Redeemer na Israel. So, God's covenant promises to Abraham sa so Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 7 are beautifully displayed in Ruth. Although the period in which she lived was one of disobedience and disarray, God had indeed made Abraham seed into a great people and settled them in the land of promise. So in Ruth's life, the blessing promised to those who bless God's people proves true. As she, isang foreigner, tanda natin, Moabite ito, is enfolded among them and we catch a glimpse of all families of the earth being blessed by Abraham's seed. Sa pamamagitan ni Haring David, magkakaroon na hindi lamang kapayapaan, kundi maging magandang relasyon din sa mga ibang bansa. And thirdly, God's divine providence for the kinsman redeemer. Actually, kung makikita lang natin, the book of Ruth is an episode in the story of Jesus. It's an episode that shows the utterly magnificent and intensely personal kindness of this God who is redeeming people for himself from all families of the earth. So, key understanding dito sa narrative is the concept of kinsman redeemer. Na kusan, this kinsman redeemer is the closest living male relative who had the duty to preserve the family name and land. Ang duties na itong kinsman redeemer nito, he could do this in a number of different ways. Una-una, buying back either land that a poor relative had to sell or the family member that had sold himself into slavery to pay debts. Ito yung nabanggit sa Leviticus chapter 25, verse 25, and again 47 to 49 na Leviticus chapter 25. A second function o pwedeng gawin na itong kinsman redeemer is avenging the death of a family member sa Numbers chapter 35, verse 19 to 21. Or third function ng kinsman redeemer is marrying the widow of a deceased relative. Ito yung nabanggit sa Deuteronomy chapter 25, verses 5 to 10. Pero all of these duties, itong tatlong duties ng kinsman redeemer na ito, could be refused, including marriage to the late relative's widow. So Ruth, in Ruth's case, the kinsman redeemer Boaz elects to carry out the duties of both. Binili niya yung lupain and taking her as his bride. So as we see, like the point here is that Ruth, kagaya ni Ruth, tayo rin. We need a kinsman redeemer who will do what is necessary to remedy our helpless condition. Sa Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2, nabanggit nga doon na tayo ay far off. We were once far off. Malayo rin tayo. Nasa labas rin tayo. We are in a helpless condition that we need a kinsman redeemer. So the readers of the New Testament will recognize Jesus Christ as the ultimate kinsman redeemer who voluntarily paid the price for the redemption of his people and takes them as his beloved bride. Says Ephesians chapter 5 verse 23 to 32 as well as we go forward to Revelation chapter 19 verse 7. So as God fulfills all roots and Naomi's need for food, home, and family through the Redeemer Boaz, we glimpse the heavenly Redeemer in whom all these needs are finally and fully met. Ibig sabihin, may ganap na na ang ating pangangailangan. Ultimately, we need salvation. Para sa ating kaligayahan, sa ating kagalakan, sa harapan ng Diyos. All these were fully met through Jesus Christ, our ultimate kinsman Redeemer. So muli ang theological themes na in-explore natin dito sa aklat ni Ruth. Firstly, God's sovereignty. Secondly, the practice of Hesed. And thirdly, God's divine providence for the kinsman redeemer. At ngayon naman ay titignan natin yung practical application ng aklat ni Ruth sa buhay natin ngayon. Tatlong bagay. Firstly, faithfulness is a very important virtue. Secondly, God's people can live in faithful obedience. And thirdly, God works through regular people in ways we cannot recognize. Firstly, faithfulness is a very important virtue. Ruth was concerned more about the welfare of her mother-in-law than she was about her own welfare or her own personal future. Yet in the end, God blessed Ruth tremendously 
And from this, we can learn to be faithful in all our relationships, trusting in God to see us through in difficult times, ano man yung ating kinahaharap. Ang pinakamahalaga dito sa lahat ng bagay na ito ay ang katapatan natin sa Diyos. Mahirap man natin pinagdadaan ng difficult times kagaya ng panahon natin ngayon. More so, tayo itinatawag nito para maging tapat sa ating Panginoon. Secondly, God's people can live in faithful obedience. So, even if yung mga quote-unquote professing believers is acting contrary, we must remain faithful to God. Tandaan natin, uh, panahon nila Ruth, supposedly itong mga Israelita, sila yung covenant people of God, sila dapat yung matapat sa Diyos, pero ang setting nila sa total mess. Hindi sila tapat sa Diyos, sila ay sumasamba sa mga Diyos-Diyosan para na silang pagano at tinalikuran nila ang Diyos na nagligtas sa kanila. But even so, sa panahon natin ngayon, kahit ang mga professing believers, siguro may mga kilala tayo na ganyan, na iba yung kanilang kinikilos. In contradiction of the Christian faith, tayo ay hindi dapat kagaya sa kanila magi tayong tapat, manatiling tapat sa Diyos. So, Boaz lived in a, as an upright, compassionate man, faithful to the Lord and unwilling to cut any ethical corners as compared to the general situation of Israel. Kakaiba ito si Boaz, makita natin na siya ay tunay ng tapat sa Diyos. Kakaiba siya siya ang tunay na mananampalataya kumpara sa karamihan, the general situa- situation of Israel. Thirdly, God works through regular people in ways we cannot recognize. So, we can see and we could only recognize this until we look back and see how He has marvelously directed things in order to bless us through knowing Him on a saving manner. Lalo-lalo na sa in a saving manner na nakilala natin ang Diyos, nakilala natin si Jesus nakita natin sitwasyon natin bilang mga makasalanan balikan natin sino nga ba o ano nga ba yung ginamit ng Diyos na paraan o person para tayo madala sa kanyang harapan ito yung mga ordinary people regular people na minsan nga hindi natin akalain na sila pa pero sa pamamagitan ng kabutihan ng Diyos God working through these regular people tunay nga na God is gracious God is merciful and God is loving and compassionate to His children. Kaya wag nating kalimutan to acknowledge that and to recognize that. And truly indeed, it is God who works and wills for His people. So muli in these three ways, we can see how we can apply Ruth in our lives today. Faithfulness is a very important virtue. God's people can live in faithful obedience. And God works through regular people in ways we cannot recognize. At tayo ngayon ay nasa also happening section ng ating lecture. Uh, tayo nga ay nasa epoch number 4, 1200 BC hanggang 930 BC. Ang ating tinatalakay ang aklat ni Ruth. At ang aklat ni Ruth, makita natin dito ay similarly, ito isang masasabi na natin, love story. At kung patungkol sa love story, Paano ba natin i-convey ang love sa pamamagitan ng words and actions? Words and actions, they need letters. And letters needs alphabets. Kaya noong 1100 BC, ang alphabet nga ay na-develop daw ng mga Phoenicians. So the Phoenician alphabet is an alphabet known in modern times from the Canaanite and Aramaic inscriptions found across the Mediterranean region. Sa katanayan, the Aphonician alphabet is also called the early linear script. Ito yung pictographic, na kung saan pictographic pictures that convey a sound or a message. Tinedevelop, tinatranslate ito sa lines and strokes na sa ganun, this could be re- read, this could be pronounced and said by other people na magkaroon sila ng parang standard convention ng mga sounds and ng mga kinukonvey nila na messages at narito nga yung early form nitong alphabet na na-develop ng Phoenicians so meron itong kahalintulad na na ating modern alphabet at nandito nga rin daw na-derive yung other alphabets and languages as well so the earliest known alphabetic inscriptions are the so-called proto-Sinaitic or yung proto-Canaanitic 
ibig sabihin proto before o yung bago dito yung panahon ng Sinaitic Sinai ito yung sa ex Gen Exodus and also proto Canaanite ito yung bago pagtawid sa Canaan yung pangakong lupa this attested to the Sinai and Canaan in the late middle and late bronze age in the late middle and late bronze at the middle age ito yung sabi natin in between na first epoch hanggang sa second epoch so basically around 2000 or so BC and late bronze age ito naman yung patawid from 2000 to 1500 BC so nag umaakma siya sa ating timeline sa ating chronology and the name Phoenician is by convention given to inscriptions beginning in the mid 11th century BC. So, ito yung binigay na para sa mga na-discover or anything inscri inscribed na matetrace in the late or mid 11th century BC. At sa katunayan, ang larawan ng tao na nakapag-discover, nakapag-translate na ito ay si Jean Jacques Barthelemy. Si Jean Jacques Berthelemy, pinanganak noong 20th of January 1716. Isa siyang French scholar who became the first person to decipher an extinct language. Na decipher nga niya yung Palmyrin alphabet no 1754 and 4 years later itong Phoenician alphabet no 1758. And during, during the French Revolution, 1789 ito hanggang 1799, na kung saan nag-end ito bilang si Napoleon, yung para established leader nila. Barthelemy was arrested and was confined for few days and was immediately released. But in 1793, he refused the position as librarian of the Bibliothèque Nationale, ito yung National Library ng France. However, he continued to hold his old functions bilang keeper of medals na itong library na ito. He enriched the national collection by many valuable accessions. So we see here a person na very devoted sa kanyang craft, sa kanyang kalaman, sa kanyang expertise. At siya ay nag-reside dito sa library at tinulungan pa niya na makagather pa ng maraming valuable na antiques masasabi natin and other of great value historically ang library ng France but he died in poverty on the 30th of April 1975 ang isa lesson dito na we can draw in line with the book of Ruth and also in line with the discovery of the Phoenician alphabet is that while we may be enriched in this life by our intellect tanda natin si Bartholomew ay very expert sa oriental languages not our intellect and not even our wealth and privileges. Si Bartholomew ay isang aristocrat. Siya ay mayaman. Siya ay makapangyarihan. Kap makapangyarihan. He was a privileged member of the society. But only in the refuge of our kinsman redeemer that we are truly blessed by the blessings of salvation. Hindi sa pamamagitan ng ating kaalaman. Hindi sa pamamagitan ng ating wealth and privileges. At kagaya ni Bartolome na namatay bilang mahirap in poverty, tayo rin ay malalaman natin if we are truly blessed, if we have found and we have trusted and we have our only kinsman redeemer sa harapan ng Diyos, then tayo ay mamamatay nga na hindi in poverty but the true blessings of salvation. At muli sa ating pagtatapos ng ating lecture sa time na ito, ang ating nang ginagawang conclusion ay isang takeaway verse mula sa aklat na ating tinalakay. At ito yung aklat ni Ruth. Ang napili ko po ay Ruth chapter 2 verse 12. It says, The Lord repay you for what you have done, and a full reward be given you by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. Magamat yung konteksto na ito ay ito yung tugon ni Boaz kay Ruth matapos niya marinig yung nangyari sa kanila ni Naomi. At ang hinighlight ni Boaz ay yung hesed nitong ni Ruth, yung kanyang acts of mercy, love, and compassion towards Naomi. Na hindi niya iniwa si Naomi na hindi siya concerned sa kanyang well-being but on Naomi's well-being. So, kagaya ni Ruth, tayo ay nangangailangan ng Redeemer.
hindi sa pamamara ng ating mga hesed, ating mga acts of compassion, love and mercy na tayo mareredeem. But through the grace of God alone, na kung saan God Himself reveals Himself to us, His holiness and how we stand before Him. Pagkat kung pinuksan niya ating mga puso, ating mga kaisipan, ating mga mata, makikita natin that we stand condemned before God. And we need a Redeemer. And God in His mercy and grace shows us who our wondrous Redeemer is. Only in Christ can we be redeemed. And only if truly that we have come to take refuge on the wings of Him alone. Kaya nga, ang ito lamang, the only refuge is in Christ and only in Him do we receive the full reward. Salvation blessings that carries us from this present temporal life into eternity in fellowship with our fellow brothers and sisters who are also redeemed by our great Redeemer. And more so, we would glorify the triune God and enjoy Him forevermore. Ito ay totoo lamang sa bawat isa na tunay niya na nagtake ng refuge kay Kristo lamang, our great Redeemer. Sa katunayan ng panahon ngayon, October 31, sa-celebrate ng mundo ang All, ang All Hallows Eve o ang Halloween Day o Halloween Eve. Pero, ang tunay na sinaselebrate dapat ng mga mananampalataya, historically, yes, the Reformation, But, in experientially, ang ating pamumuhay, ang pagkabuhay at muling pagkabuhay ni Jesus na kung saan sa pamamagitan ng kanyang perfectong buhay, kanyang perfect sacrifice, na kanyang pagkabuhay muli, ang kanyang katwiran, ang siya magtatawid sa atin, that would redeem us. And in Christ, there would be no condemnation. Kaya nawa ay may celebrate natin ng buhay na ito sa pamamagitan lamang ng refuge in our Redeemer. Salamat po muli sa inyong pagsama sa akin sa lecture number 10, Aklat na Ruth, mag edifying sa atin at palalahanan sa atin na bagamat napaka nakatakot man yung panahon natin ngayon. Kagaya nila Ruth, may pandemic, may famine, but God is wondrously working His way, working out through this for the redemption of those who take refuge in Him. Salamat po muli at pagpalain po ang bawat isa sa araw na ito.